when one of the richest men in the world personally renews your show, audiences can expect big things. But will it deliver? Let's take a look. Yesterday, The Expanse Season 4 dropped on Amazon Prime. How did they do? Let's talk. For anyone who doesn't know, The Expanse was a former award-winning show on the Sci-Fi Channel. The first three seasons were there. Unfortunately, it was canceled, I believe, due to low viewership. But it has been renewed. So what's the basic plot? Believe it or not, this is actually kind of a Lovecraftian outer space sci-fi show. What do I mean Lovecraftian? Well, in Lovecraft's work, you basically have the terror uh, from the stars. Terror of the unknown. These things that humans can't even comprehend will come and you accidentally touch upon them and go mad. And that's exactly what we see in the first two seasons, at least, of The Expanse with the protomolecule. Protomolecule is this extra solar system life form that ends up in our solar system under control of kind of an evil scientist who wants to weaponize it, but this protomolecule has a mind of its own. And it takes over an asteroid that's a converted into a space station sort of like you might convert a detached garage into like a guest house or something. And it's got this molecule then basically turns people into zombies. It zombifies the citizens of the station. It zombifies citizens who get near it. And this thing is heading to earth. Eventually our ragtag diverse group of heroes is able to subvert this and send it careening into Venus. Later, it rises from Venus and forms the ring. The ring is kind of a solar system to solar system transporter telephone device that opens up the galaxy to humans. So the basic political system we need to know is you have Earth and Mars, those are the main two planets. They've been warring back and forth. Season three was all about uh, a war between them. And, or sorry, season two was the war. I'm sure I'll get lots of comments on that. And you also have another group further out in our asteroid belt and beyond called the Belters. And we find some interesting differences between them. Uh, people from Mars and the belt cannot really walk on earth because the gravity is much too heavy i believe belters cannot normally uh, walk on any planet because they're growing up in space their bones are too thin and their muscles aren't strong enough which was one of the cool things i really missed from season one in season one they would get these freaky tall thin people uh, and give them all sorts of like bony protrusions which is sort of like a sign that their bodies develop different. Maybe evolution is taking a different course for the Belters. And this is something that they sort of dropped, I would assume, for budgetary reasons. It's just kind of expensive. So at any rate, we end up with our main cast of crew on a ship called the Rasenade. We have Jim Holden, who is from Earth. We have Alex Kamal, who is a former... Mars soldier. We have Naomi Nagata, a belter, and we have Amos Burton, who is also from Earth, but has spent a lot of time hanging out in the belt, uh, who is also kind of a psychopath. Now, this is the A story. There's also a B and C story in this season that were kind of eh, but I'm guessing that they set things up. Actually, there's a B, C, and D. So the brunt of season three was that they got this gate open, they got the ring open, and they are able to go to all these solar systems now. Uh, and there's one character we haven't talked about, which is Joe Miller, played by Thomas Jane. 
Thomas Jane, a man who could have been. Uh, Thomas Jane is a actually fan freaking tastic actor. He was Punisher in movie around like uh, I don't know two thousand something or another. He was in a lot of great films. He could have been. I don't know. He could have been more, but for some reason, like his star just never rose. You know, he he had a few things that were always canceled, but he's really great in this. And I think the last thing I saw him before this or during this time was that horrible The Predator remake. Ooh, he played a crazy guy in it. Very good performance. Very questionable movies. But anyways, so Joel Miller, he was a detective who got absorbed into the protomolecule. The protomolecule sort of stole his memories, and now he's ghost detective. And only our main character, Jim Holden, can see Ghost Detective uh, as he goes through all this stuff. So one of the things that is not clear is Ghost Detective a good guy or a bad guy or what's the deal with him? So we start this show with Jim Holden. He's on Earth. Uh, the Rasenade is in orbit around Earth. They're trying to get permission to go search for more protomolecule because they want to destroy it in these other solar systems. Now, a very interesting thing, Jim Holden's mom. Oh my God, listen to her voice. What is up with the women who get cast on the show? Their, their voices are just so gravelly, it's weird. It's like when the casting director is reading over resumes, you know, he sees one that says, um, I have 13 years acting experience in community theater and I can stunt drive and uh, I don't do new scenes, but I will do bathing suit shots. Oh, and uh, I also smoke three packs of cigarettes for 10 years. And the casting director's all like, perfect. She's hired. Um, all the women have really weirdly gravelly voices and it's just bizarre. But getting back to it, they finally uh, get permission to go into or through the ring to this world that is either Ilum or New Terra, depending on who you're talking to. There's a conflict because the Belters are now looking for a homeland. Uh, they found some whatever there that they're digging up, and it's not really important, a bit of a MacGuffin. But they want a new homeland, and there's an Earth Corporation that wants it for its own mineral rights. Holden wants to go there because they found structures. They found re remnants of alien technology that all seems to be inert. Joe Miller, ghost detective, he also wants Jim Holden to go there because he wants to investigate what happened to this alien race that sent out the... Um, that set out the proto molecule. So after way too long, they get going, they land there, and that's where things sort of go topsy-turvy. Now, in general, I love The Expanse. Season one was fantastic. Season two was fantastic. Season three got a little eh, but it was overall good. Season four, well, I'm saying it now, it's a watch, especially if you're a fan of the show. But it feels like a bit of a setup season. Like all the main stuff has sort of played itself out in seasons one, two, and three. And maybe we're getting to something bigger in season five. But you kind of need the setup. You need the backstory. So they're on this planet. Um, and all, you know, right from the beginning, there is tension between the Belters and the Earth Corporation. Some Earth Corporation people get killed in a intentional or unintentional, depending on how you look at it, sabotage attack. Then, of course, the leader of the Earth Company security forces is a dick who goes around murdering natives, colonization, blah, blah, blah. You get a, it gets a little woke there, but it's not too bad. The crew of the Rasenade... Uh, they just don't care. 
they're are they're just really interested in this alien tech. So it ends up by going there, Ghost Detective is taken along with the crew and he turns this machinery on and the planet, uh, you know, it's one thing I, I sort of didn't like about this. It never even attempted to explain what was going on. I hope in future seasons they sort of do. So they have not quite pyramid structures. They're almost like big claws sticking up out of the land. They're all metallic. So they get turned on and then they just start like chewing up five kilometer wide strips of uh, the, the planet for some reason. And there's lightning strikes that hit them all. And then there's like an island chain that become fusion reactors. What? What? How does this, any of this make sense? I don't know. And then, of course, that leads to natural disasters where they all, well, they all should be working together, but they can't. And, of course, there's a MacGuffin about why they can't just get everybody up to the shifts. The protomolecule makes fusion stop working. And then there's a whole subplot about there's the three ships in space and they're all going to fall into the planet and burn up if they're not saved and blah, blah, blah. Ugh. Uh, it gets complicated and sort of nothing happens. Now, of course, Holden ends up saving the day. He and Ghost Detective get to the center of this complex and they find some sort of an artifact that they say is from the civilization that killed the aliens who developed the protomolecule. Complicated, right? Yeah, it gets a little bit. So there's Alien Civilization 1 who intentionally or unintentionally almost kill all life in our solar system. And then there's alien civilization two that almost wiped or maybe did wipe them out. Okay. So in the end of the day, we think ghost detective is maybe dead. You've got Jim Holden. He saves everyone. It turns off all the machinery. Um, all the ships are saved. The main, murderous psychopathic human is taken prisoner and presumably the belter woman who was in charge or not in charge but who helped blow up the original platform she is also taken prisoner and we are led to believe that she will be prosecuted or stand trial or something or other Whew. that was quite a long long bit there right uh, one of the problems with The Expanse Season 4 is that it's really too long. They really could have condensed this down. Like, there's this whole weird plot where um, in the alien ruins, there's slugs that'll paralyze and kill people right away. And uh, everybody's getting green something something in their eyes that makes them go blind, except for Jim Holden, of course, because he's on anti-radiation medication. And it's just like... That whole subplot was not needed, and it took like two episodes. You could have just cut that stuff out. Now, where does that leave us in terms of everybody else in the story? So there were more characters before. So, for example, uh, we have uh, the character that people probably missed the most is Bobby Draper. Now she was a super duper awesome marine badass from Mars and she hung out with the crew in seasons two and three, helped them out a lot. In this season they kind of explore what it's like for soldiers to go back after a war is over and there's kind of nothing for them to do. Now she got a dishonorable discharge because the like a lot of who shot John, but she sort of helped earth and she saved everybody, but a lot of people didn't like that she helped earth. So, uh, she was sort of persona non grata. All the only job she could get is disassembling warships. And the whole thing is about how the system kind of lets her down. There's no, um, there's not many jobs. Nobody wants to hire her. She's stuck living with family uh, she meets another unemployed Marine, and they sort of hit it off, have a little bit of a romance. 
But her main story is her, I guess you could say, fall from grace, where she goes from being a proud, honorable Martian citizen who then starts stealing stuff. She joins this criminal gang that is selling parts from these disassembled ships. Now, she tries to make it so that they're not stealing weapons. They're stealing, like, communication systems, and they have, uh, like, environmental systems that convert something something into water and soil and things like that things that the belters would need and would be willing to pay a lot of money for so she does this and it's a whole subplot about she becomes a criminal but she still has a heart of gold and she figures out that there is a belter plot going on and that in the very end she tries to inform the Secretary, um, Chris Jen, uh, sorry, the UN Secretary of Earth, Chris Jen Aversala, who has her own subplot, which is kind of boring too. Uh, her whole thing is she's going to have an election to stay the president of Earth, basically, um, and she screws it up. The big argument is she doesn't want people to go through the these gates and settle new planets because there's indication of protomolecules. We don't know if whatever wiped out alien species one will come back and wipe out earth or if alien species one is somewhere out there and will wipe out earth. Her main opponent wants everyone to go because unemployment on earth is like 50% and there's thousands of new worlds and everybody can do go do what they want and start a new blah, blah, blah. So Christian loses. That's like the only interesting upshot of this. Uh, And Bobby contacts her just as her opponent is celebrating. Uh, And Bobby's like, hey, the Belters are trying to kill us. They're starting some whatever with the stolen tech from Mars. And Bobby wants to get together with Christian and work. Nice. And that brings us to subplot D. Lord. All right, so subplot D has to deal with the Belters. So anyone who knows the show, the Belters are sort of long-suffering. They've been screwed over by both Mars and Earth. Um, Now, the Belters have sort of risen in prominence, and they sort of control... It's not real clear, to be perfectly honest, but they basically control... Uh, the gate that will allow ships to go wherever in the universe. Now, they have a lot of different factions, and some are trying to gain control, and some are still pissed off at Earth and Mars, who have now uh, de-escalated. They're sort of disarming. And one of our heroes on the Rasenade, Naomi, had a previous boyfriend who fathered her child. There's a lot of yeah, backstory. Anyways, this guy, he's starting to set up a, a revolution. Now, it comes out in the end that he is the one who has been um, funding these things, uh, who's been funding the uh, purchasing of these parts from Mars. And that leads us to Kamina Drummer, another extremely gravelly-voiced woman um on the show so she is sort of she's more or less commanding this space station and it's a whole story about they got to find this bad guy and you know all this stuff and in the end uh she quits her job and he is left out there and the bad belter is launching an attack on earth and that's where they leave the season so what we have is basically 10 episodes of setting up what looks like an awesome season five final thoughts uh i like the show it's still a good show it was really kind of slow you can definitely skip episodes like six and seven maybe eight um, 
I'm very happy with the quality of the production of Amazon. I think the graphics looked better. And they got pretty much everyone back uh, with the exception of, um, let me see, Fred Johnson did show up in one. Uh, Ashford was with Cara Drum most of the time. Um, the guy whose name I can't think of. Oh, Anderson Dawes. He does not show up. I can only assume that's because Jared Harris has been in like a ton of other stuff. I think he's in uh, a bunch of other TV series. Um, oh, yeah, he was in uh, Carnival Row. Go check out my review on that. So pretty good overall. I am very excited for season five. Hopefully next year we'll get that. And we're done. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave your comment down below. What did you think of The Expanse Season 4? Was the more swearing worth it to be on Amazon Prime? Did you like it better on Sci-Fi? Do you think it's going to get better in the future? This is Yang Yang Zhao signing out. I'll talk to you guys later.